Hello, good to see you all again. It's uh, that time of the week. Time to get back into our study and our course. And as you know, this is week number eight, which means hmm, that's about halfway through, isn't it? Hmm. That means it's coming close to midterm time. And as you know, midterms will be next week during week number nine. Uh, I sent you an email last week with the exact time <clears throat> of the midterm, so be sure that you are ready uh, a few minutes before. I strongly recommend that you, you know, get ready, get at your computer, get ready to go a few minutes before the test. I'll send you the test in an email to the class. You will have uh, about 30, 30 to 40 minutes to take the test. And then when you're done, you send me your answers. Uh, I will give you an answer sheet. You can write your answers on the answer sheet, or you can write them in the email that you send me, but do not write them on the test itself. Okay, in an email, you know, 1A, 2B, this kind of thing, or on the answer sheet, but not, don't write them in the test and send me back the test, no. All right, you'll, you'll have to finish it in time. You'll be, it'll be rushed. You, you're, you, you know, I'm not with you, so I can't watch you take it. So I'm gonna, you have to do it really quickly. You can't um, waste a lot of time during the test. If you're late, one minute to five minutes late, you'll lose 20% of your score. And if you're later than five minutes, you'll just get a zero on the test. So timing is very important and you will be forced to go fairly quickly to get through the test. The test will have uh, vocabulary questions, story questions, you know, main ideas, key points of the story, grammar, um, and yeah, like vocabulary, basically similar questions to what we've been uh, studying. Plus, you will have one new passage, one passage that you haven't read that you will have to read and answer questions. Now, the passage will be on uh, the same topic as one of the stories we've read, one of the chapters. And um, <clears throat> it'll be a similar length, and the questions will be similar style of questions to the questions <coughs> we answer uh, in the book. So it'll be similar, but it'll be new. You know, some of the vocabulary will be similar, and so on. You'll have to read it and answer the questions. That'll be new. Everything else on the test will be review, vocabulary, grammar, and so on. Okay, it'll be based on four chapters, chapter one, chapter three, chapter five, and chapter eight. Today we will finish chapter eight. One, three, five, and eight. So the vocabulary, the grammar, the, the stories, the main points, you should review. Um, and again, you will get one, one new passage on one of those topics. Learning a second language, a healthy diet, um, the, uh, volunteer vacations and exercise, the importance of exercise for children and really for everyone. Okay, remember the questions will be based on what we learned in the readings. Okay, remember that. If you have questions about the midterm test, you may ask me in your email, of course. Any questions at all, send me. I'm happy to answer them. But you should be now reviewing, preparing, starting to get ready for next week's midterm test. Let's go over the work now. Please turn to page 108, 108. Think about it. This was the homework, very well done. Another good effort by almost everybody. Why did the USDA prepare a food guide? Well, really there's two reasons. One, help people learn, teach people, educate people on what food is healthy and what isn't. And of course, hopefully improve people's lives. Now, step one is to educate and step two is to um, is for the people to follow the advice, right? It's one thing to read and learn, but it's another to do. So they really wanted both, of course, to improve people's lives through this uh, knowledge of healthy diet. Uh, why are fats, oils, and sweets group, grouped together? Um, they're generally bad for you or harmful for you. They're quite similar. Um, they're often used in cooking. They're not really... They're not really um, <clears throat> a meal, like that you don't base a meal around them. They're used in meals, used for cooking and so on. And a few of you said, you know, they're kind of non-essential. I mean, if we do eat them, we should eat very little, consume very little of them. 
Um, personally, I think, you know, we could live without them. I think they're not essential, but I think it's, they're almost inevitable uh, to, that we're going we're gonna to consume them a little bit. Um, <clears throat> number three, a lot of interesting answers for number three. Why do Japanese people change their diet when they move to the U.S.? Well, really, it's, it's a lot of its availability. Right? Local food in a new country, you know, it's hard to get sometimes food from your country when you move to a new country. In the stores, the grocery stores, convenience stores, restaurants, it's not as available. Um, and uh, food culture, the environment, you know. Um, when you move to a new country, you, you automatically, you know, you adapt uh, to various aspects of the culture. And one of them is food. Uh, you know, when I moved to Korea, you know, I didn't know too much about Korean food, but started eating it and liking it. And, you know, I love it now and I, I eat it regularly. Um, uh, it's just, it's pretty, you know, if you're living in Korea, it's very natural to eat Korean food very often. And that would be the same in you know any country that you could you move to. Um, or maybe some people wanted to change. You know they they like the taste. Some of you said they like burgers and ice cream. Of course, you know, pizzas. Sure, yeah. And a lot of people just simply want to change their diet uh, to fit in in a new culture, or because they like the food, or that kind of thing. All right, good work, everyone. Uh, G, another look. Why do I eat when I'm not hungry? Let's go over this together. The next time you want to eat something, ask yourself a question. Are you really hungry? If you answer no, then ask yourself why. Why do you want to eat when your body is not really hungry? The following reasons may help you understand why you do so, why you do this. To do so is to do this or do that. In this case, do what? Eat when you're not really hungry. Uh, I'm bored. Sometimes we're bored and don't have anything better to do. When this happens and you start to walk into the kitchen, stop yourself, go to another part of the house, or go outside, go for a walk. I do this too much, you know, I'm bored, you know, or I kind of, you know, nothing to do. I walk over, open the refrigerator, look for something interesting in the refrigerator. I think it's a common thing many people do. Try to avoid that. It tastes good, sometimes it does, but sometimes we eat anything we can find in the kitchen even if it really isn't that great tasting. When I'm dieting, when I'm on a diet, when I'm dieting or on a diet, means you're changing your eating habits to lose weight, to get healthier. I like to eat food that I really enjoy, eat less of it and enjoy it. I have a lot of stress. This is often a common reason for eating. I often eat because of stress, not because I am hungry and try to read a book or exercise instead. Yeah, stress causes people to eat a lot. During final exam time, at my, when I was in university, a lot of people gained weight. We had like long, like three week long final exam period and a lot of people got stressed, they ate a lot, they ate too much, they gained weight. You know, maybe they had skin issues because of it. Yeah, that's a real thing, be careful of that. TV makes me wanna eat. I really rarely watched TV when I was thin. Then I started to watch TV almost every evening and I gained 20 kilograms. That's a lot. Evening TV programs have many food commercials that make me run to the kitchen for a snack. My best advice is to stop watching evening television. You know, you've, that's happened to you when you, you see this commercial and the food commercial and oh, it looks so delicious. And so you have to run and open up the refrigerator and have a snack. Yeah, be careful of that. They're playing with your mind. Be careful. Because I'm really thirsty. Sometimes people eat because they are thirsty. In ha instead of having something to drink, people eat something that is often fattening, makes you fat, gain weight. The next time you feel hungry, drink some water. If your stomach is making noise, it is time to eat. In English, we say growling, okay, growling. Like an angry dog. When a dog is angry, we say the dog is growling. So your stomach is like an angry dog when it's hungry. If you want food between meals when your stomach is not making noise, don't eat. Remember, you should be, give your body some kind of nutrition three times a day. 
Nutrition means good food. If you do have to eat between meals, eat a piece of fruit or a vegetable. Try to think about what and why you're eating the next time you want a snack. Ask yourself, why am I eating? Number one, the main idea, B, there are many reasons why people eat when they are not hungry. Number two, A, bored. B, it tastes good. C, I have a lot of stress. D, watching TV, especially evening. E, I'm really thirsty. Uh, number three, instead of eating, what are some other things you can do? You can drink water, you can go for a walk, you can read, you can exercise, you can stop watching TV late at night, uh, you can don't go to the kitchen, don't open up the refrigerator, go, go to a, your bedroom and read a book or something like that. Do you agree with all the advice? Yeah, I guess I do. I mean, I don't know if I eat when I'm thirsty. I thought that was a little odd, but... Generally, I agree with this advice. I think it's good advice. But look at the picture. Oh my gosh. Everything these ladies are doing is wrong. Look, they're, what, are, what are they eating? Healthy food? Junk food. That's exactly junk food, if you look at that photo. Coca-Cola, potato chips, maybe, maybe gummy bears? You know, maybe, I don't know. Anything in a package that's bright colors like that is not good for you. Okay, the red and yellow and green. Anything that's colorful is not good for you. I, I can guarantee it. Uh, looks like some chocolate. Oh, it looks almost like choco pie, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, everything is bad. What are they doing? They're watching TV. They're snacking on junk food. They're sitting too close to the TV. That's actually bad for you. Um, when, when is this? Probably this is late at night. You know, usually friends get together at night, watch TV, eat junk food. Uh, if you're going to eat bad food, don't eat it late at night. That's the, the worst time. Coca-Cola has caffeine. It'll keep you awake. Uh, anyway, see that picture? Don't be like them. All right. Homework. H. This is your written homework this week. H, number one and number two. Okay? H, number one. H number two. This is the homework you must send me by Thursday morning. Number one, is there a high rate of heart disease or cancer in your country, in Korea or China, if you're from China? Uh, what do you think are some reasons? Give me two reasons why. If you say yes, two reasons why yes for Korea, China, wherever. If you say no, two reasons why no, that's fine. Yes or no, up to you, but two reasons. Number two, the reading passage discusses a healthy diet as a way to prevent disease. Work with a classmate. Work alone. Make a list of other ways to prevent disease. Okay, two more ways. So, not healthy diet. Healthy diet is one very good way to prevent disease. Yes, but that's not one answer. Two different answers how you can be healthier, how you can be, uh, prevent diseases besides a healthy diet. Number one, yes or no, two reasons. Number two, two ways to prevent disease and be healthy. Written homework, uh, hand it to me in your email, or write it to me in your email by Thursday, 9 a.m. Uh, grammar quiz, page 112. Okay, go ahead, take a few minutes. Uh, finish I. Now, uh, you can use the answers more than once. And sometimes there's more than one possible answer. If you see two possible answers, you can write them both down if you like. Go ahead. As a result of years of research, we know that too much animal fat is bad for our health. Number one, too much or a lot of. Too much animal fat, a lot of animal fat. Number two, Americans eat a lot of meat. A lot of meat. Um, you could say too much meat. Yeah, you could say too much meat. And a small amount of grains, fruits, and vegetables, or fewer grains. Number two could be, uh, number three could be fewer, or a small amount of. Because of their diet, they have a high rate of cancer. With diseases, we say rate, high rate. So number five, sorry, number four, a high rate of cancer and heart disease. People in Japan, in contrast, 
eat a lot of grains and very little meat or more grains, less meat. Yeah, either a lot of and very little, five, six, or more, less, more grains, five, less meat, six. Less goes with uncountable. You don't say one meat, two meats, three meats. No, you say uh, less meat, uh, less meat, or a, I guess you could say a small amount of meat, yeah. I guess so, yeah, that's okay. But I, or very, I like very little. Yeah, I think very little is better. Less meat, very little meat. The Japanese also have a very low rate of cancer and heart disease. Number four, a high rate. Number seven, a low rate. Number eight, more. Okay, now, doctors advise people. So, don't say, doctors don't say, oh, eat a lot of. They never say a lot of anything. They'll say, eat more healthy food, eat less meat, eat fewer dairy products, fewer products, okay? Really, for eight, nine, and 10, the best answers are more, less, and fewer. Why? Because that's what doctors would say. More grains, fruit, and vegetable, less meat, fewer dairy products. Very good. Let's move on. Today, we will start chapter nine, Alfred Nobel, a man of peace. Chapter nine is not on the midterm test, okay? We have finished everything up to the midterm test now. Chapter one, three, five, and eight, okay? Chapter nine will be on the final exam, but we will start it this week. This week's work, we will review in two weeks after the midterm test in our, our lecture video for week 10. Number one, look at the photograph below. The medal, this medal, is a Nobel Prize. Wow, it's gold, beautiful gold medallion, gold medal, Nobel Prize. Uh, Alfred, Nobel, Alfred Nobel's image, that's his profile. And why is he famous? Well, A, he had established the Nobel Prize, but before that, C, he invented dynamite. He became one of the richest men in the world by inventing dynamite. Hmm, then, Interesting thing happened. Some people loved him, some people not so much. Dynamite, it's very helpful. It's very, we still use dynamite today, it's very useful. And it's safe if you use it carefully. But dynamite can be dangerous, of course, it's an explosive. And dynamite can be used in war as bombs, ways to hurt, harm, kill people. So there's pluses and minuses, good and bad points to dynamite. You're gonna read a very interesting story about Alfred Nobel. Something very strange happened. A weird, unusual, rare thing, a mistake. And he was able to see and learn how people felt about him. And that gave him a feeling that later caused him to come up with the idea for the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize is a result of a mistake. Let's read, it's a very interesting story. Page 114, uh, Alfred Nobel, a man of peace, okay? So I want you to read page 114, 115, read the story and answer A on page 116, part one and Part two, yeah. And then stop. Okay, page 114, 115, 116. I think you can do everything in 15 minutes or less. Try to. Anyway, finish it, but try to push yourself a little bit. Remember, on the midterm test, you have to read a passage. So you have to practice reading quickly and answering questions quickly. Okay, go ahead. Page 114, 115, 116. When you're done, come back and I'll go over the story with you here. Alfred Nobel, a man of peace. The headline in the newspaper announced the death of Alfred Nobel on April 13th, 19, 1888. The reporter called him a salesman of death. Ooh, that's not good. The dynamite king because he invented this powerful explosive. Explosive, something to make an explosion, like a bomb. 
In fact, Alfred Nobel's dynamite business had made him a very rich man. This, the newspaper story continued, giving Alfred Nobel's age, nationality, and other information about his business. However, the words, the dynamite king, were all that the 55-year-old Swedish man read. So who is this 55-year-old Swedish man? If you're from Sweden, you use the uh, adjective Swedish. Okay? Now it's E, not E. I know sometimes I hear Sweden or Swedish. It's E. In English, it's E. Sweden. Swedish. Okay? Uh, Alfred Nobel sadly put down his, the newspaper. So the 55-year-old Swedish man was Alfred Nobel. But he's like, I thought he died. He's reading a newspaper article about his own death? Strange. No, he wasn't dead. His brother Ludwig had died the day before. And the French newspaper had made a big mistake. Oh, okay. So his brother died. You know, his brother was actually also a very, very famous engineer. A very high-level accomplished engineer, Ludwig Nobel. Ludwig is a man's name. Uh, it's not common anymore. It's a bit old style name from Northern European countries like uh, Germany, Sweden, and Denmark, and so on. Ludwig. Maybe you've heard of the famous composer uh, Beethoven. Beethoven's first name was Ludwig as well. Uh, all the same, all the same means even so, still, nevertheless, Alfred Nobel was disturbed. He was upset. Was this the way the world was going to remember him? How the world remembers you is what we call legacy. L-E-G-A-C-Y. Legacy is how you're remembered. What you leave for the world is your legacy. He did not like that idea at all. Zero. Not at all. Remember, at all goes with negative. We've studied that before. He had spent his life working for peace in the world. He hated violence and war. He had invented dynamite to save lives, lives that were lost because other explosives were dangerous to use. He wanted people to remember him as a man of peace. Alfred Nobel invented dynamite at a perfect moment in time, perfect time in history. Okay, moment in time means a time in history. Perfect moment in time. Many countries, were beginning to build railroads and tunnels and needed a safe, powerful explosive to construct railroad tracks through mountains. Construct, build. Notice the synonym, build, construct, same. People also needed dynamite to blow up, explode, blow up, okay, explode. Uh, stone in order to construct buildings, dams, and roads. Alfred Nobel invented dynamite for these peaceful uses. Moreover, and also, he believed that if all countries had the same powerful weapons, they would see how impossible war was and wars would end. In fact, this was a popular idea of his day. Of his day means at that time, okay, the time he was alive. Okay, of his day, of that day, at that time, when he was alive at that time. Nobel was very upset about the image, the the image, the, the reputation the world had of him, the feeling they had of him. But he did not know what to do about it. He thought about his problem for years. He, didn't, he wanted to think of the best way for people to use his fortune of $9 million after his death. That's a lot of money now. That's like, uh, you know, uh, Uck or Beckhock, maybe. Uh, that's a lot of money. A hundred years ago, that was, you know, hundred times that much money. That was a lot of money. One of the richest men in the world back then. After his death, then in 1895, an adventurer named Solomon August Andre made plans for an expedition to reach the North Pole. Expedition? Hmm. People all over the world were excited about Andre's journey. Journey, expedition. X, going out. Traveling out, like exit, exponential, external. 
Pedition, P-E-D means foot, like pedal, or a tripod, three feet. Uh, feet out, going out, pedestrian, walking out. Expedition means a journey out, but not just any journey. You know, going from your house to the store to buy milk is not an expedition. Expedition is a difficult journey, dangerous, you have to plan well. Going to the North Pole. North Pole? Is that easy? No. You have to plan well. You have to be very careful. Plan well. Plan carefully. It's dangerous. You have to prepare. Climbing Mount Everest or any other big mountain? Not easy. You have to prepare well. It's dangerous. Prepare and plan for this expedition. Nobel read about Andre's plan too and had an inspiration, an idea. Uh, he finally knew what to do with his fortune. He wrote his last will and testament. In his will, will means last will and testament. We usually just say will in your will. But your last testament, your last statement, your last wish. So this is a legal document that you write usually when you're older. So when I die, uh, you know, all my money goes to, you know, my children. Or uh, I, I give it to a charity, a good cause. All your, you know, your valuable thing, your house, your property, your your business, your money, car, whatever. In his will, he instructed people to use all of his money for an annual award, annual every year, A-N-N, -N, year, like anniversary, uh, as an honor to leaders of science, literature, and world peace. He stated, testament, statement, he stated that these leaders could be men or women of any nationality. Alfred Nobel died on December 10th, 1896, at the age of 63. He was unmarried and had no children. People all over the world wondered who was going to get Nobel's money. They were amazed when they learned of Alfred Nobel's plan to award annual prizes in the fields of physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, and peace. The first Nobel prizes were awarded in 1901 and they very soon became the greatest honor that a person could receive in these fields. In, 1860, in 1969, an additional award, an award for economics was added. Notice 1901, don't say 1901. 1901, 1902, 1909, 1910, 11, 12. The report of Alfred Nobel's death had been a mistake. But the decision that he made because of this error, mistake, error, synonyms, mistake equals error, gave the world the image he wanted. Alfred Nobel established the Nobel Prize and the world thinks of him the way he wanted to be remembered. Alfred Nobel, man of peace. So that way he wanted to be remembered is his legacy. What you leave for the world, your legacy, like your children, if you have children, that's a legacy. When you die, you leave them for the world. Your art, artists, musicians, you know, architects, people have something that lives after they die is their legacy, how they're remembered, what remains after they are gone. Look at the uh, picture. This is a building. They're using dynamite to take down a building. But this is not explosion. Explosion is a bomb. <laughs> that would be very, very dangerous. This is an implosion. I am, meaning im or inside. Implosion is when it, ex it explodes. It implodes from the inside. It's careful. It's safe. You know, the government will say, we have to take this building down. It's too old or it's dangerous. So they carefully place dynamite so that it will implode, fall down inside on itself. Much safer and fairly common. Good work on the reading. Read A, uh, the part one C, Alfred Nobel is a peaceful man who gave the world uh, a great prize, Nobel Prize. Part two, he invented dynamite to help save lives, to help construct bridges and dams and buildings. But the result, he was a salesman of death. Negative. Established the Nobel Prize to uh, honor people 
for great work in their field, and the result, he was a man of peace. I'd much rather be man of peace than salesman of death. Wouldn't you? I think so. Reading analysis, B. Now, here's the final thing we will do today. Page 117, 118, and 119. Please answer questions one through nine. And then, uh, so stop the video, answer part B, one through nine. Come back and I'll review it for you. Go ahead. Number one, A, however, means but. However, but, the words, the dynamite king were all that he read, okay? Um, uh, however means opposite or change, so B is number one. Robert wanted to go to the beach, however, opposite. It rained, so he stayed home. Go to the beach, rain, stay home, opposite. And C, all means only that. All means the only thing, two. These three words were the only words, were all that he read, all only. Number two, all the same. Uh, now Alfred Nobel was disturbed. All the same means still, uh, even so, nevertheless, B. It did not matter that the news was a mistake. Alfred was still upset. All the same, still, disturbed, upset. All the same is like it did not matter. Even so, nevertheless, didn't matter, still upset. Number three, uh, at all, C. Remember, not all is negative, not at all. I did not like that movie at all. I did not like the weather today at all. He did not like all, anything about the idea. Not at all, zero, not anything. Number three is C. Number four. Um, uh, the best answer here is C, uh, an explanation. Not an example. He, there's no example of a specific life lost. They're explaining the lives. The lives, he saved what lives? Not this life, not an example of this man, that woman. No, he's explaining uh, what lives, the lives. Which lives did he save? Oh, lives in general that were lost because other explosives were very dangerous to use. Number four is C. Number five, moreover, uh, number two, um, number two, A, uh, A is number two. Moreover means and, also, in addition. B, Robert needed to learn English because he wanted to go to college in the United States. Moreover, and also, one, he had to speak English to get a good job. B is one. And C, his day at that time, when he was alive, when he lived, three. Okay, C, his day refers to the time at the time that he lived. A is number two, B is number one, C is number three. Number six, uh, fortune, C, wealth. Okay, fortune, money, wealth, lots of money. Number seven, last will and testament. Well, what is it? a legal paper that states how a person wishes his or her possessions to be distributed, given, given after his or her death. After I die, these people, this organization gets my money, gets my business, my house, my factory, whatever. How do you know? Remember the word? What's the word? Footnote. We call this a footnote. F-O-O-T-N-O-T-E. Foot, bottom, note a note at the bottom of a page. Number eight, fields, uh, number two, subject area. Fields is like, kind of like major, okay? Field is where you, yeah, where you study or where you work. You're studying in the field of economics or the field of engineering, so you're gonna work, when you finish school, you will work in that field, right? So, you know, uh, education is a field. You want to be a teacher, then you're studying education and you will work in that field, hopefully, when you graduate. Other fields, yeah, law, field of law, education, engineering. Think of it like kind of a major. Major field are basically very similar and usually the same thing. The report of Alfred Nobel's death was a mistake, but the decision that he made because of this error gave the world the image he wanted. Number nine, error.
error, mistake. In baseball, we use the word error. When you make a mistake, it's called an error, E. Homework. Okay, C, dictionary skills, page 120 and 121. Uh, D, the grammar, word forms, page 122, 123. And E, page 124E, vocabulary, fill in the blanks. F, no, F we will do after, after the midterm. <clears throat> okay, so chapter nine, homework C, D, and E, and stop and tell me that you finished it. And of course, also page 111, H from chapter eight, H number one and number two. H number one and number two on page 111 is your written homework. I wanna see your answers. The other homework, just tell me you finished it and that's it. And remember, this week we are not doing a, a listening lab, okay? We're taking a week off, two weeks off, for the midterm test. This week, only one video. This video, no listening lab. Uh, next week, only the midterm test. Then in week 10, we will continue with both regular class study and listening lab. That's all for this week. Please email if you have any questions. Email me your homework by Thursday morning. Uh, good luck. Have a good week. Ask me any questions that you have. Study and prepare well, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.